Bonjour à toutes et à tous et bienvenue sur Blabla Katie. My name is Katie and today we're going to blabla about regular French verbs in present tense. Essentially, how to conjugate the present tense in French with regular verbs only. So for those of you who have seen my last video on subject pronouns in French, now we can actually move on to the actual conjugation of verbs. We can create a full sentence. A verb is essentially just the action of the sentence and the subject pronoun is the doer of the verb. So the verb on its own, when it's not conjugated, is just infinitive. For example, the verb chanter. Chanter just means to sing. It's not conjugated. It's not attached to a subject pronoun. And the reason why subject pronouns are so, so important to this video is because these pronouns are actually what are going to tell us how to correctly conjugate the verb, how to change it so that it connects with the subject pronoun. So if we want to take to sing and actually make a sentence with the subject pronoun I and say, I sing, you would say, je chante. These changes, in addition to depending on the subject pronoun itself, are also going to depend on the specific verb tense that you're using. In French, there are three verb tenses, present, past, and future. Obviously, we're just going over present today. And I do want to note that when you conjugate verbs in French in present tense, there are two possible meanings that will depend on context. While in English, we can say I sing or I am singing in this moment right now, there's only one way to say that in French, je chante, same thing. So in order to understand how to conjugate verbs in French, it's much easier if you break all of the regular verbs up into three main groups. Verbs that end in e, er, like chanter, verbs that end in i, er, and verbs that end in er, e. We're going to talk about each three of these groups individually, but before doing that, you are going to do a quick pre-assessment activity. So you should be seeing three sentences on the screen, and you'll notice that there are blanks in each sentence with an infinitive verb right after. Your job is to simply conjugate each verb depending on the subject pronoun that comes before it. Now let's jump into the three different groups of French verbs, starting with the verbs that end in e, er. So first you want to take the infinitive form, chanter, and you want to completely erase e, er. So as of right now, you just have chant. At the end of that, you're going to add a specific letter or letters depending on the subject pronoun. If you're using the subject pronoun je, you just add an e at the end, and that's the same thing for il, elle, yel, and on. If you're using the subject pronoun tu, you're going to add e, s. With the subject pronoun nous, o, n, s, vous, e, z, and il, elle, pluriel, that means plural, il and elle, with the s at the end, are just going to add e, n, t. So now if we were to put the stem of chanter, remember that's chant, into this chart, you would say je chante, tu chantes, il, elle, yel, on chante, and il, elle, pluriel, chante. Regardless of the different letters that come after each of these subject pronouns, they are all going to sound the same. If you're still a little unsure as to why certain letters in French are silent, definitely check out my video on why is everything in French silent. That'll help clear some things up. And with nous, you're going to say chantons, vous chantez. This is going to be exactly the same thing for all of the other regular e, er verbs. I will be creating a future video on the irregular verbs and how to conjugate them, so definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But now we're going to move into a little mini activity for verbs that end in e, er. You should be seeing four different verbs that are already conjugated, and you're just going to decide which pronoun or pronouns they correspond to. There are two verbs that have several different options for subject pronouns that would of course depend on context. For the first verb, donner, this is going to correspond only to vous. Vous donnez, that means you give or you are giving. The second verb, m, there are quite a few different pronouns that can go with this. Je, m, and if you remember from my last video on subject pronouns, this is going to become j'aime. Or you can choose il, elle, il, and on, m. There's just an e at the end, so it can be any of these subject pronouns. The third verb, cherche, the two subject pronouns that can go with this are il or elle pluriel. This means they search or they are searching. And the last verb, étudiant, can only correspond to nous. We are studying or we study. The next group of verbs are those that end in e, 
er. Again, you're going to take the infinitive of one of these verbs. That means it is not conjugated. For example, finir, which means to finish. And you're going to cut off the I and the R. So you're left with the stem or the root F E N. For je, you would add ES. Same thing with tu. With il, elle, yel, and on, you would add i, te. And now here's where it gets a little different. With no, you're adding e, s, s, o, n, s. With vous, you're adding e, s, s, e, z. And with il, elle, pluriel, you're adding e, s, s, e, n, te. So if we were to take f, e, n, the root of the verb finir, and put it into this chart, we would say je finis. Tu fini, il, elle, il, on fini. All of those are the same. Then, nous finissons, vous finissez, il, elle, pluriel, finissent. And I do want to point out, I know I keep saying il, elle, pluriel. You don't say pluriel when you're actually speaking. It's just il finisse, elle finisse. I'm just saying the word so that you can have a cue that I'm talking about plural. And again, this is going to be the same for every regular verb that ends with i, er. So now I'm going to give you another mini activity just to get this a little more ingrained in your mind. Once again, you're going to see four different verbs that are already conjugated and you just have to choose the correct pronoun. First, there's only one option with définissons, nous définissons, and that means we define or we are defining. With puni, this can be either je puni or tu puni. If you're having a little bit of trouble with tu and pu with the u sound, go check out my video on the differences between u and u. I think that'll be really helpful. And the meaning of this is punish, I or you punish. The third verb, rougis, il rougis or elle rougis. And this means they are blushing or they blush. And the fourth verb, grossissez. This goes only with the subject pronoun vous. Vous grossissez. And this means you are getting bigger. And finally, the third group of verbs in French that are regular end with er, e. For example, descendre, descendre go down. Just like with the other two times, you're going to completely erase the er, e, and you're left with the stem or the root. And to that, you're going to add these specific endings depending on what subject pronoun it corresponds to. With je and tu, you're just going to add s. With il, elle, on, or il, you're not going to add anything, you just keep the root. With nous, o, n, s, vous, e, z, and with il and elle, o, n, t. So these last three conjugations are exactly the same as the last three conjugations for the e, er verbs as well. So if we take descendre and put it into all of these different patterns, je descends, tu descends, il, elle, il, on descend. You'll notice that the final de, s, or just the final de, depending on which one you're saying, is not pronounced. All of those subject pronouns are just descend. But on the other side of the chart, you are going to hear the final de. Nous descendons, vous descendez, il, elle descend. So with the plural form, you are going to hear the de. And that is super important because it'll help you differentiate when someone is speaking, if they're saying il singulier descend or il pluriel descend. If you got all of that down, now we can move on to the final assessment. You're going to look at the same sentences that you saw in the pre-assessment activity, and you're just going to conjugate the verbs depending on the subject pronoun. Now I'm going to read the correct responses for each sentence and we'll talk about each conjugation after. Chaque matin, j'écoute un podcast pendant que vous attendez le bus. Here you'll notice that je and écouter becomes j'écoute. It's an er verb, so you delete er, and because the subject pronoun is je, you just add e. And the second verb in that sentence, attendez, just goes with the subject pronoun vous. You'll also notice that even though the S is normally silent at the end of vous, when it's followed by attendez, you're going to hear it. Vous attendez. If you're not sure why or if you don't know why it sounds like a Z instead of an S, go check out my videos on the French liaison. That'll also be clarifying. And now let's move on to the second sentence. On dépend de ses amis, donc elle choisit ses copains avec soin. Like attendez, dépend is an er, e verb, so you delete er, e. And because the subject pronoun is on, 
you're not going to add anything. Also note that you don't hear the day at the end of dépend. And with the second verb in the sentence, choisi comes from an er verb. You just delete er and then add it because it goes with elle. And finally, tu marches quand il marche, tu réfléchis quand il réfléchit, et tu réponds quand il répond. Quite a few verbs in this one, but I think the sentence does a really good job of showing you the pronunciation differences depending on the subject pronoun. First, we have the verb marcher. It's an er verb, delete those two letters. And then with tu, you add es, tu marches. Il pluriel, you add ent, but you're still going to have the same pronunciation. Tu marches, il marche. Réfléchir is a verb that ends obviously in er, so with tu you add es, and with il pluriel, ent. The pronunciation here is a little different. Tu réfléchis, il réfléchit. And finally, the re verb in the sentence. Répondre, tu réponds, has an s at the end even though you don't hear it. And il répond, you are going to hear the de. Voila. If you still have questions on conjugating regular verbs in French, please put them in the comments down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. As usual, if you got any value out of this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. A la prochaine.